Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Dental Implant Practices Podcast. I'm your host, Philip Gordon. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Be sure to go to our Facebook page and look for Dental Implant Practices Closed Group. Ask for an invitation, and you can view cases that I present and other topics that uh, other dental implant peers are talking about and discussing. So join the Facebook page and then also be sure to go to our website, www.dentalimplantpractices.com, where I've got videos, um, conferences that I'm speaking at, other tutorials and um, coaching and mentoring opportunities. So go there, check us out on the website, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Today's episode is labeled Strawman and Nobel. Dental Implant Clone Wars, and the Endgame. If you're a Star Wars fan, then you might know what the Clone Wars were. They were a part of the Star Wars saga where the evil emperor cloned a warrior and 2,000 more to create an army. This army became the first wave of stormtroopers, and because they were all the same and they wore the same uniform, they met a certain spec or specification of standards. Now, if we switch gears to another Disney franchise and discuss Marvel Universe, you may be familiar with the final chapter of the series Endgame. The movie is a culmination of more than 20 films where all the characters came together to fight for the future of the universe against the villain Thanos. He possesses the Infinity Stones and the power to destroy all life. The first of the last two movies is titled Infinity War and brings all the characters together and sets the stage for the next movie, Endgame. Endgame is where the 10-year-long journey of movies and characters finally culminates in a long-term conclusion with the Avengers finally defeating the evil Thanos and saving the universe. It was a battle that took place over more than five years and had a countless toll of deaths that in the short term seemed like a battle that could not be won, but the Avengers were more dedicated to the long run and would do whatever it takes to win the end game rather than become discouraged about short-term wins or losses. Both of these franchises, Star Wars and Marvel, are science fiction and superhero movies that deal with a number of fun and exciting plots and adventures. They also have some great lessons to share if you pay attention. First, I'd like to discuss the topics of dental implant clones as it relates to the ever-changing dental implant products and the movement of the implant company mergers, DSO contracts, the general dentist's role in the implant movement, and then finally we'll wrap it up with how all this relates to the big picture or the end game. To define a clone, first let's decide what is to be the original and what is meeting spec and what this means in the implant business. Is spec some level of perfection? some sort of quality and standard that can be measured. If the original or premium brand is determined by a specific measurement, then the spec can be measured and met by a specific and desired and precise shape and fit. This fit and spec should be easy to be measured and establish a standardization to be met. Or a spec defined as a quality and premium status like a name brand implant system such as Nobel or Strawman. If this is the case, then quality and deluxeness is defined by status And because they are considered premium, they were originally sold to specialists and have name brand power and are high priced. This is perceived quality and defined by reviews. And this creates a division and reputation of quality and standards. And they are thus viewed as superior over the value brand. Now let's define a clone implant or what is also often defined as a value brand implant. If a clone or value brand implant is labeled or viewed as inferior quality and performance based on market perceptions and price, Perhaps they are a newer implant company that has not been in business as long as others. Is a clone or value brand implant viewed as inferior because the company was developed and originally sold to general dentists as opposed to specialist market? Perhaps a clone implant shares a copied or certain internal connection and claims compatibility with another well-known brand. Is a clone or value brand perhaps an implant company that sells to a very niche market and is not interested in selling to the mass markets for all users in all situations? It's not really considered that these qualities may actually be smart and beneficial to the whole implant industry. It's just considered to be less than premium because of the perceptions of the current marketplace. Can a good implant or good implant company be based solely on price that an implant sells for or the market share they possess? Or is the implant and company based on performance, innovation, and continually meeting some spec like fit and integrity? How do we as dentists evaluate the spec and how much Does that play a role in our decision whether to use a certain product or not? Why is creating a copy or a clone of a certain connection is considered a bad thing in the implant industry when in so many other industries is considered a good thing or even demanded that certain fittings be standardized? 
Consider the automotive and construction industries, for example. There are very certain specs that are industry standard and are all universal and are universal to all parts. This allows all the people supplying, using, and fixing things to keep costs down, makes them much more user friendly, and creates a network effect. It is this network effect because everyone gains and wins if they're all using the same systems. Like if you go into a hardware store and buy a three quarter inch nut, and go into another hardware store and buy a different three quarter inch bolt. Because the industry is standardized and use the same network effect, there is a 99.9% .9 chance the two pieces fit together every time. This is because of industry spec and certain tolerances being used and a standardization to all processes. This does not exist in the dental implant industry because certain companies want to keep their parts and pieces proprietary. They believe by not sharing their information and by not embracing the network effect that they will make more revenue and take control of more market share. This is why new connections and new parts continue to hit the market. Not necessarily because these connections are any better, but because if you are stuck into their system and have bought enough inventory and supplies, that the cost to switch will be too high. This sunk cost idea and branding and marketing of the big groups is what keeps most doctors stuck with the big name companies. They market their superiority and eliteness and sell that with non-interchangeable parts and hope to keep the market share closed from competitors. Because what would other dentists say about you if you're not placing a superior implant line? Does that make you a less superior dentist? Until someone or some group demands that there are interchangeable parts to exchange, there's no reason for these groups to embrace the network effect. Instead, they choose to keep, keep it all internal and hope to keep others out. When we can use interchangeable parts to build complex systems is when we all grow exponentially. In order to have interchangeable parts, we must have spec and we can decide what the tolerances can be. Narrow tolerances are expensive, and wide tolerances can make sure most things can fit within a standard that is still acceptable. When you can ratchet up production and interchangeability. Let's make the tolerance and spec and fit all standardized, and let's keep the line moving. Let's be really clear about the spec and define quality and make tolerances more specific, and we'll all benefit. If you buy a Toyota Corolla, for example, one of the most affordable cars on the market today, it's better quality than a Rolls-Royce and Cadillac. Not in deluxeness per se, but insofar as meeting spec and reliability. Quality can be defined as meeting spec and delivering usefulness, not always deluxeness. One way to record quality is to record defects and how often does it come in the way you would expect it. If you were to pull 1,000 Toyota Corollas off the production line, chances are all 1,000 of them have a tighter tolerance and spec than the Rolls Royce or Cadillac. Let's also talk about digital implants in dentistry for a minute. Nowadays, we also have interchangeable files for imaging and computer systems as well. Most digital systems in dentistry use STL and DICOM files for surgical and lab production protocols. This exchange of information has leveraged the network effect, and we all benefit from the exchangeability. Remember the old days when Serona was a completely closed system? How well did that play out for them in the end game? They tried to close the system and control the info, and thus control the marketplace. But eventually other products came along, and people and their money chose other options. This will happen in the implant world too. This free exchange of information and industrialism is what keeps us as a culture pushing forward. No one is in charge. Standards are exchanged and continue to evolve. We are pushed to deliver products and services faster and cheaper than ever nowadays. The implant companies have benefited from this competitive nature and monopoly systems, but it doesn't make sense for the practitioners practicing implant dentistry day in and day out. At the same time, we as solo practitioners are are polished and perfecting our systems, there are massive DSO groups out there lowering prices and mass producing, all while the numbers of implants placed in this country goes up each year. Perhaps the dental industrial complex cannot replace the caring professional. Are we a cog in an ever-perfecting machine, or are we delivering quality and uniqueness? Are we delivering spec on a surgical level, but do we also have to meet the human experience as well? We have to be more human and personal, and that cannot be put in a box and put into spec. Excellence isn't necessarily about meeting spec. It's about setting spec. It is defined by what the customer sees as quality right this minute and tomorrow. And if you're good, you'll deliver that and reset the expectation again. So let's look at the big name implant brands, systems, Strawman and Nobel, and see what they have done in the past, see what value brands they have brought into their systems, and see where the future is heading for the industry. Now I'm going to run through a timeline of events that occurred within the Nobel and Strawman past. In 2008, in February, Nobel purchases Alpha Biotech for $95 million to gain access to its active implant, which Alpha Biotech invented. Then in 2010, Nisnik sells 75% of Implant Direct to Danaher Corporation for $225 million. Then in 2012, 
Strawman buys 49% of the Neodent company for $277 million. Then in August of 2014, ClearChoice switches accounts from Nobel to the Strawman Neodent line. Then in September of 2014, Danaher buys Nobel BioCare for $2.2 billion. Then in early 2015, Strawman buys the rest of the shares uh, up to 100% market share for Neodent for the remainder $218 million. Then in 2017, Danaher buys the remaining 25% of Implant Direct from Nisnik. Then early in 2018, there's the merger of Nobel and Implant Direct. In 2019, Danaher spins off all dental sectors to create Invista Holdings. This includes Cavo, Kerr, ICAT, Pelton and Crane, Implant Direct, Nobel, Oroscoptic, Dexis, and Ormco. Then in 2019, Affordable Dentures and Implants buys DDS Dentures and Implants and has contracts with BioHorizons and Neodent, therefore putting Neodent in contract with the two largest implant DSO groups in the country being Affordable Dentures and Implants and ClearChoice. Now let's go back to talking about these two implant companies and how they collide. 2018, there was a leaked report from the statement from Nova BioCare as it was passed to its employees after the merger was announced. And it states, we are excited to announce that we are bringing together our premium and value implant business, Nobel BioCare and Implant Direct, to better serve our customers and patients. Hans G will lead our multi-brand implant business. He will work over the next several months to bring these two businesses together. In addition, Ricky Tinnenberg will lead HR for the combined company. Tom Stratton and Nora Barber will be leaving the organization. We thank them for their service. A separate announcement will follow shortly detailing Hans' combined leadership teams. We refer to this OPCO internally as Dental Implant Solutions, which will contain a portfolio of brands including Nobel BioCare, Implant Direct, Alpha Biotech, and Oroscopic. Externally, we will continue to refer to these brands by their current names. There will be no change to any brand internally or externally. More information will be forthcoming as these two OPCOs integrate into new dental implant solutions. We will share updates on this progress with our implant associates via Town Hall's Journey 2020 and Nobel BioCare SharePoint. So Danaher owns 75% of implant direct since 2010, but with Nisnik owning the, re the remaining 25%. It was not until 2017 that Danaher bought Nisnik's 25%, giving it the ability to merge the implant direct with Nobel BioCare. Implant Direct's executive positions of president and HR have been eliminated, with the Implant Direct's employees reporting to the president of Nobel and other Nobel executives. The internal document states that Nobel will refer to this OPCO internally as Dental Implant Solutions. This acknowledges that Danaher considers its three implant companies as a single OPCO operating company, refuting the claim that they are still separate companies. Yes, the two companies have their own products, many of which offer cross-compatibility. This could benefit the customers of both Implant Direct and Nobel. At least now, Nobel customers can be assured that Implant Direct's Nobel-compatible abutments fit Nobel implants as precisely as Nobel abutments because there is no barrier of sharing the engineering drawings. And Nobel customers can feel confident that Implant Direct's products are of the highest quality, something that Implant Direct's customers have known for years because Nobel's executives could not legally justify selling dental implant products that did not meet their highest standards or specs. This merger of the two very successful implant companies, Implant Direct and Nobel, can benefit customers of both companies. Implant Direct customers could gain access to Nobel's image-guided solutions, and Nobel customers could gain access to Implant Direct's innovative, patented implant designs and its all-in-one package of implants with abutment, transfer, healing collar, and cover screw included for free for less than half the price of the U.S. list of a compatible Nobel implant alone. However, will there be a sharing of data and ideas of these previous competitive companies to create a new super company that will come together and try to dominate? Or will the larger and longer established Nobel squash all the momentum the Implant Direct has made over the last decade and totally derail the market share is made in the value sector? So how would you recommend that Danaher handle this merger of the two competing dental implant companies to capitalize on the investment it made in buying out Nisnik? Implant Direct is no longer a joint venture now that Danaher owns 100%. Both companies sell competing implant systems with cross-compatibility, but Implant Direct's products are 50% less expensive. Both companies offer high-quality customer service, education, and broad product selection. Do you really think Danaher can allow Implant Direct to continue to convert Nobel customers or force Nobel to discount to keep its customers? There are separate sales forces competing for the same customer with commissions on the line. 
Nobel will only allow dental clients from Implant Direct to move up to the premium line and won't allow current customers from Nobel to go down to the Implant Direct. So how does that play out? Implant Direct has also been forced to remove all literature claiming that their parts are compatible with Nobel parts, even now that they are being manufactured at the same plant in Yorba Linda. How does that make sense? Now, Implant Direct also has stopped the claims that the transfer mount can be used as an abutment so they can sell more products. Has the merger been a success and made both companies stronger, or is Nobel trying to squash all the momentum of Implant Direct and force all sales upstream to the premium Nobel company? Time will tell the story. Now let's look at the Strawman Group. Strawman is the premium line, with Neodent making up the value segment. Neodent has a great implant and parts that are accommodating to the full arch game, which is a very hot market right now. Neodent stole the contract from Nobel BioCare with clear choice and is very telling in becoming one of the preferred providers for affordable dentures and implants as well. It is also the partner company in the U.S. with Zirconzon Restorative Lab Production Technologies. When Strawman bought some convertible bonds of Megagen in 2014, the president released a statement at that time. Marco Godola, Strawman's CEO, explained the rationale for the transaction. And I quote, Strawman is fully committed to being the partner of choice in the premium segment implant dentistry, offering an excellent combination of innovation, quality, support, clinical documentation, expertise, and peace of mind. However, some dentists are willing to pay for lower standards than those offered by premium brands, which has fueled the growth for the value segment. To address the requirements and to capture this significant business opportunity, we are building a platform of value brands in which Megagen will have an important role. Megagen is a, de- is a dynamic company with a growing footprint of key value markets. The convertible bonds offer a stri- strategic flexibility with controlled risk at a great opportunity to penetrate the value segment in Asia Pacific. Ultimately, they cashed out the bonds and decided not to merge with Megagen and bought full control of Neodent instead for its value brand. I think it's amazing that the CEO would comment, quote, some dentists are willing to pay for lower standards, end quote. I'm sure the dentists that write checks to Strawman every month that use Neodent will be happy to know they're using lower standard products. This comment surprises me, but it seems to come with no repercussion as sales for Strawman continue to flourish in the value areas. Let's talk about Neodent for a moment. Neodent was founded in 1993. Neodent is Latin America's leading dental implant company. It was the first Brazilian company in the implant sector to receive certification from the Ministry of Health. The company opened its own premises in Curitoba in 1998 where it's headquartered and the -the state-of-the-art manufacturing is located. What's really interesting is in 2014, after ClearChoice switched to Strawman and Neodent was bought by Danaher, the two companies collided in 2014 when Nobel sues Neodent over patent infringement issues. Neodent contested Nobel BioCare's allegations of patent infringement in the USA. In their response to a recent announcement made by Nobel BioCare, Neodent said that in it intended to vigorously defend itself against Nobel's allegations of patent infringement uh, relating to one of its range of implants. The implant in question was Neodent Drive CM. It was one of several implants the company introduced in the USA of March of 2014, which offered excellent alternatives for dentists and patients who want high-quality, state-of-the-art, proven implant solutions at an attractive, competitive price. Prior to launching Drive CM, Neodent obtained, obtained in-depth evaluations to ensure its designs respected all valid intellectual property rights. The Drive CM incorporates features such as innovation connection, which is different from Nobel BioCare's implant. The current complaint appears to be based on patents that Nobel BioCare obtained after the Drive CM was introduced into the USA. Neodent is looking into the allegations carefully and will respond appropriately. That was what was written in 2014. The Neodent CEO made the quote, the preliminary design of the Nobel Active, which was invented and developed by an Israeli team at Alpha Biotech, not originally by Nobel BioCare, as many people believe. We did our homework before launching our range of implants in the U.S., especially at the Drive CM, and we are confident that we have not infringed on any patents, said Tony Sassino, CEO of Neodent USA. In its media release, Nobel BioCare has sent a clear signal to the dental community that our implant is strikingly similar to theirs. Nobel sees that we have a very attractive implant and a high-quality alternative. So there's a couple thoughts now how these companies will handle the value segments. One thought is that once the money stops rolling in, Strawman and Nobel will start downsizing Neodent and Implant Direct until you can order online, until you can only order online. They could have bought them to just buy a smaller, more established company and squeeze the profit out of it. Nobel and Strawman are just using their name to build a little hype around Neodent and Implant Direct so the money can last a little longer. Or they could continue to use these companies as feeders to gain market share in the GP market 
then convert these clients up to their premium line after they are comfortable with the umbrella company for full service and support. Let's face it, Strawman and Nobel couldn't sell to general dentists without pissing off their specialists and or lowering their ridiculously high prices. But they were losing out on the large number of GPs entering the implant game. They figured the GPs aren't actually going to worry about the perceived name or quality of the product once it's under the larger and more respected umbrella company. If GPs have 5 to 10 failures a year, everyone will just assume it was because of lack of experience or blame the patient. If it gets too bad, they will just go back to referring the cases to the specialist or switch up to the premium brand. So now that we have to answer the so now they have to answer the question of what to do. Do they continue to separate the product lines, the branding, the separate sales forces and separate the training to the GP market and the specialist market or is there a place to play in the middle? These $400 implant reps are drinking the Kool-Aid thinking that their implants are so much better because their company Nobel, Strawman, or Dinsply trained them to say that. The reality is that the market, their market is shrinking rapidly. The $150 to $250 implant is booming and doctors are becoming more smarter and smarter and realizing that they can get the same result with a $200 implant. Neodent, Han, Implant Direct, BioHorizons, and others are absolutely in that sweet spot with price point which is why they're starting to take a lot of that business. The biggest implant center in the USA being Clear Choice and many other big names in the United States such as Affordable Dentures and Implants are switching to Neodent because they're seeing the same results or even better for half the price. The difference in Strawman and Nobel is that Strawman bought a completely new line in Neodent to their company to add diversity with a new system and a value brand as well. While Nobel brought in a clone implant line that is a copy of a system they already own and a copy of their competitors not necessarily a new line of implants. With Implant Direct, there was a lack of innovation. And with Neodent, they are competing for the most widely used full arch implant system and have huge competitive advantage over Implant Direct. Implant Direct has a great history with the GP field. However, Neodent is gaining ground in the GP field and in the specialist field as well. What is the end game? And who will come out ahead in the implant manufacturing and surgical placement field? And how does all this relate to the patient care how will it evolve to continue to get the much needed care and service to the growing number of patients each year? We're playing the end game now, and I'm in it for the long run. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. <laughs>